Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me today. For today, we have a very, very, very special guest. We have an amazing, amazing, amazing guest. I'm not going to take a long time because we have a lot to talk about, and I'm so excited so excited to have our guest here. Hello, Ben. So I'm so excited, ladies and gentlemen, to have. Oh, hold on a second. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, how are you doing? I am great. How are you? I am doing so good, looking sharp, I can see, looking very, very sharp. I didn't want to bore people because I just wanted to jump into our conversation and introduce you as you are here with me. Yes. First and foremost, I really want to thank you so very much because I remember on our last conversation series, mm -hmm. you did say that you would do it anytime. And when I had to start over and I reach out to you a year ago, a year ago, you were so quick to say, hey, no problem. I got you whenever you want to do it. And last year it was tough because I was not able to do it. You know, there was a lot of things going on in the back end. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I had to put it off. But your attitude was never stingy. You was like, not a problem whenever you're ready. And this year, Mr. Busy, busy <laughs> man, catch me if you can, man. And you still made it happen for me. And I just really want to thank you so, so very much. It shows your dedication to your craft. It shows that you are a man of your word. And when you say yes, it's a definite, you are going to make it happen, your integrity. And I am so very much appreciative of you thank you so much for being here with me today wow. well thank you for having me and yes most definitely you know so it's, it's a pleasure of mine to uh, to be here uh you know to uh i mean you you here to interview me how can i say no to that you know so you you're, you're bringing awareness to how, who i am and what i'm doing within my life so definitely of course and and yeah i'm, I'm here and and yeah let's 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 get it going let's get started <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to jump right in. Hi. Um, tell me exactly what are you into these days? Because you are definitely busy. We don't even see you on Instagram like that. So let the people know what exactly are you involved in this day? Wow. So I'm involved with, with, Quite a lot, of course. So I have I have uh, a production company which I partner um, with uh, with a few people, especially my cousin. Uh, it's called Ample Production, and uh, we have a, uh, a a television series uh, called To Each His Own. It is now on Amazon Prime, so please look it up. To Each His Own is on Amazon Prime, and it's also now on Tubi. All right. So, and and we're we're working constantly hard. On, on other projects. So there's other projects that's been slated that we've already started filming um, and that we're working on right now. And um, also I, I work with a nonprofit uh, uh, organization um, called RER Consultants in which we work with teenagers, work with teenagers at, at, to sort of like help bridge the gap between uh, the youth and the police department so they can see that, you know, there's their people you know, just like us, you know, um, and the police can really get a connection with the youth as well. So that's an organization that really work on on bridging that gap between police officers and and the the, the community, especially the the young black youth, the black and brown youth, so that they can you know trust one another and and not be so quick to judge one another, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, we all need each other. Um, and and I work with, of course, uh, MIA Leg Legacy, MIA uh, Media Corporation, which, you know, uh, is, is a black media uh, organization, which we go out to the community and, and we pretty much 
promote everything that is black that is happening within our community um you know all of the the the, the events and 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 so much really there's so much um and i work with other production companies as well that may need my services as a videographer filmmaker and of course joe wesley photography which is my photography company which i pretty much um i'm shooting all the time um you know catering to a lot of people that pretty much needs a, a good photography service so that's what i got going on right now so it's 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 a lot but i'm able to to manage it all right to be able to to make the time to manage it all you know so right now in this day and age i live by a calendar so if it's not on my calendar then it's not happening <laughs> so yes oh she went off what's going on okay you're back i touched the wrong button okay yes yeah, so um now was the organization is it the interview or probably the um because i saw you posted something on your instagram and there were a few youth who were there and maybe a few police or security officers around and you were describing yeah. your you know your line of work to them yes so basically um i i i just started as far as introducing photography to the youth so to, to help them see and understand that you know photography is a path in life that could take you abroad that could take you many different places you know so um so that's that's uh you know rer pretty much work uh th there's so many services that that rer provides such as uh, um uh you know how to properly take care of yourself your skin facials and whatnot uh how to, your diet dietitian that comes in and and really talk to the to the kids about proper diet proper eating you know how to eat healthy and still eat foods that taste great but also healthy and that's good for your body you know so there's there's a lot so what you saw there was just my particular class you know um in which i was introducing them to photography awesome now joe let the people know exactly where you are located i believe that you are in florida correct yes yeah. yes I'm, I'm in florida i'm in uh south florida pretty much broward miami dade uh county you know so i'm pretty much in those particular two counties back and forth so that's that's where i i make my living okay great now going from the fact that you said that these days you live through a calendar which i can definitely echo because it was so difficult to get a handle of you <laughs> um now i want to know that what flows that um that schedule is it your passion because you are pretty much a busy man but you did say just now that you are able to maneuver with everything so what fuels that is it the passion that you have for the work that you do well i i love what i do i love being behind the camera so whether it's doing videography whether it's cinematography or even photography i love being behind the camera so um you know i, I get clients all the time that needs my services and and also with the different organizations, you know, um, I have to make time within my schedule and my calendar for, for these different organizations as well. So, you know, uh, a lot of the things in which I do, they're pre-scheduled. So I put them on my calendar um, and I have to also make time for myself as well. You know, so I, I, I find time within my day to day calendar to sort of like do even small tasks because I also have to take time to edit to edit photos, edit videos. So sometimes that may take a, a lot of time within my day. So, and you mentioned it was pretty hard to reach me at times because oftentimes when I'm working, my phone is down, okay? I kind of put it aside. So uh, like I, I notice sometimes where I would be tagged on a story. And by the time that I realized I was tagged on the story, it's like two days later, and I and I forgot, you know, I, I wasn't even able to uh, uh, repost that story, and and that's because I I don't get on the phone, I don't get on social media as much as I would like to, because I'm so focused on on being present with whatever that I have going on at that moment. So finding the time to actually get on the phone and do all of the social media stuff, it's 
it's it's rare i may find a little bit of time within the day to do that but for the most part i'm i'm actively uh busy i'm actively working and and focus on whatever i have going on at that given time and moment you know so i cannot be working and picking up the phone and so i wouldn't necessarily be able to fully focus my attention because i'm behind the camera you know and being behind the camera is not one of those jobs in which you can you know pick up your phone and and respond to people you know casually because you have to definitely focus on the job at hand Excellent. Now, two things. Does it mean that now there's an opening for a social media assistant? Maybe in the down the line. Maybe do you feel like if the calendar is going to continue to be so packed and so big that you probably will need to have someone to manage your social media, to insert, you know, to reply, to see what you got going on. That is something that I that I have considered, um, right? But you know, j just. But I have I haven't really taken the time to actually find who that person would be to sort of help me with that. But that but um, if I need assistance, it would probably be more on the business side of things, you know, in opposed to the social media side of things. Because uh, if I have that assistance on the business side of things, then maybe I can really focus on the social media in the way in which I would like to. Um, but I don't know. That is something that I have to think about and carefully think about to see and. Uh, how that can service me and help me with whatever that I have going on in my life right now. Excellent. But I think that you manage it well. I mean, I did panic a little bit because I didn't hear back from you, but you called me right in there. You were like, no, once you are on my schedule, once I have something on my schedule, it's on my schedule. So yeah. that's excellent. That's excellent. Um, now, Joe, you are a videographer, a mm -hmm. photographer, you are a cinematographer, you are a bodybuilder, a YouTube personality, and so many, a barber. Yes. Can you walk us through, um, but these days I could see that you are a lot more focusing on the videography, photography type of work, but did you want to walk people through, I mean, because this is definitely um, working through creativity. Um, can you give us a little bit of your background as far as like how you started and that lane of work? Well, um, so, you know, uh, when I started college, I was a communication major, but I had really no passion into it. I figured maybe I'll get into advertising. I, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, but w w what I did love, I love going to, to the movies. I love uh, uh, films and I love art. I've always loved the arts, you know, no matter what type of arts, the visual arts, whether it's film, whether it's photography, whether it's sculpturing, whether it's any of those things. So while I was in college at FSU, uh, I took a photography class and I was hooked. And I was hooked, I, was, I found myself in a dark room uh, working and, and, you know, just spending hours and hours. And I realized, wow, like I, time just passed by and I didn't even notice because I was so into what I was doing. So photography became a passion of mine. It became something that I actually enjoyed, you know? So I was trying to figure out which form of photography I was shooting everything, but my favorite subject, of course, became people, right? So human beings, you know, became my favorite subjects to shoot. And, um, and one thing led to another in which, you know, I moved back down to uh, South Florida and I was, you know, doing photography, portrait photography. Uh, I was shooting a lot of models at one point. And right now I cater to a lot of, of business professionals um, and it's just been something that I enjoy. But also I've always loved the film. I've always loved filmmaking. And um, since my, you know, since these days, these cameras are hybrid cameras in which you can do video and photography. Well, I decided, oh, let me take a, let me utilize this video portion of it. And um, then I created a, a production company, Apple Production, and partnered with my cousin, him, in which he's an amazing writer. So, um, you know, he started writing these stories. Uh, and from there on, you know, I decided to really focus on on the cinematic aspect, on being behind the camera, but really having a photography background and understanding how to light a subject. So I kind of took that knowledge and understanding and applied it to uh, filmmaking, to uh, uh, cinematography. And I've, and, you know, I've just been doing it ever since. And 
and I, I enjoy it. I love it, you know? So, you know, I, I'm also a YouTuber, you know, uh, you can follow me on just Joe thoughts, uh, in which I provide my perspective on, on mainly subjects about relationships. And because I feel like, you know, um, when I look at, at, at black relationships, we have kind of been falling apart, you know, um, and I grew up in a religious background. My dad was a preacher, and um, and my my both, both of my parents was in my life. Even though they didn't quite work out together, I've had the benefits of having my mother always around and my dad, and my father always around, and to be nurtured by the two of them and having a different, uh, you know, learning different things from them. But those different that I've learned really helped me to be a balanced individual. So, but but also seeing in terms of how uh the system as a whole uh, uh doesn't necessarily it's not here to to kind of keep families together so i you know i i i i notice there's a lot of issues in our community in which we're always fighting against one another and and we have forgotten our roles where where the men have become more feminine and the women have become more masculine and and in doing so um, it is very, very difficult to sort of like find that balance to work with one another because we definitely need one another. We definitely need family. We definitely need to be able to properly work and communicate and function as a family, as a community, because when we're all just individuals and thinking we can do it all by ourselves, then it is easy to be distracted it is easy to be conditioned to follow certain perspectives that doesn't necessarily serve us as a community serve us as a family and you know i firmly believe that that women is pretty much the foundation of civilization and if you destroy women and their th uh, train of thought and how they think and what they feel and believe about themselves that will extend to children and the children will, will be developed with, uh, with characteristics and behaviors and thought processes that doesn't help them to know and understand their roles as individuals and what they can bring into the family structure. So, you know, my uh, YouTube page is predominantly catered to sort of help bring us together, you know, to help the men to understand that, you know, you have a duty in being a man to to know exactly what it is to be a man so you can be that provider that protector you know so you can stand on your masculine and stand on your principles and having integrity as a man you know so you can be what a woman actually needs you know and also vice versa where a woman can understand her role as a woman and the importance of that role and the importance of being feminine and the importance of of understanding her power and and her feminine and qualities and how she can really manipulate the direction of the world if she can uh, grasp the power of her feminine energy because men follow that feminine energy you know and and it and when women behave like men is somewhat becoming very competitive within men and women and when a man behave like women you're c competing with what a woman is and it's not right it's imbalanced it doesn't help the family it leaves the children confused not knowing who they are what their roles in society you know so that's pretty much what i've grown up to believe and and my youtube page is uh focused on, on that uh perspective wow you definitely open a can of um a door that i wasn't necessarily going to go in um with you today but since you open it i really like it because i follow your youtube and i used to follow you on facebook and yeah. i did find that you had a lot of thought provocative because i used to die on the comments because sometimes some of the statements would get people extremely upset in their feelings you know, people would get very, very mad. Now, two things. I'm going to have to, we're going to talk photography, but now that you've opened this door and you have um, your thought process, which is just Joe, but your thought process here explain um, your YouTube. Because if someone just comes on your YouTube, it would feel or probably look just a little bit provocative because you're just blunt with what you're yeah. saying. Now, 
You talk a lot about um, feminine energy, masculine energy, which so many people are easily wanting to talk about it. But do you find, because let's just be really honest, I live in Haiti, mm -hmm. right? And we all know what's going on in Haiti, which is not the only country that now you have a disperse, right? You have in Africa Haitians that, are, that have migrated into the United States. It's the same thing for people who are living in countries like Ukraine in Africa. They are migrating into Europe, right? But how does a man or a woman, I mean, when you get displaced like that, I mean, you are in a survival mode. Are we correct? And if we are correct, you two are from Haiti. I mean, your parents are from Haiti. So in Haiti. you are from Haiti as well? Yes. Yes, oh. I was born in Haiti. Oui, ah, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but confirm. Yeah. So, um, so Joe, how does um, I mean, let's just be really honest. How does a family that is living a country like Haiti and traveling, or even Ukraine, anybody, you know, now these people are we're gonna we we have to think about language barriers. We have to think about the stress. We have let's think about what that person has been through, and then now that person is going into a country like the United States. It's survival instinct. Even myself, every time I have to go back over there, it's a different. Mentality. I'm definitely not in that whole feminine, pretty. I may just be to travel. But once, you, once you get there, you know, the United States is a country where you have to grind. I mean, you know that the United States is a country where, you know, if you don't grind, if you don't have any cash, you can't live. So how does one and how does a family structure is able, how does a man stays in that masculinity, allowing his woman to stay in that feminine energy if the couple or if people in general, society in general, is going to such displacement, how can you explain that? Well, um, you know, America is predominantly, you know, it's about money, right? So, um, you know, this whole feminist movement was pretty much created so you can have more women in the workforce, right? So if you go back into the 1940s, 1950s, right? I mean, let's, let's just, you know, um, excluding black people right because black people as a whole have always worked in america black women have always worked in america so there was never a point in time in which women was not working in this in in america and uh however there's this idea of the black man is you know of men in general is the provider yes of course you know the the duties and role of a man is not just to provide, but to protect, you know, to make sure that, that your family and, and your woman is safe because she holds the key to your future, right? There is no future without women. However, in America, it, everything is about power and money, right? So we live in, a, in a, a capitalistic democracy, not just a democracy, but a capitalistic democracy. So in order for 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 more money to be made by businesses and corporations and to even tax more people you need more people in the workforce so the uh, the, the best way to do so is to find ways to get women operating more into the workforce and when there's more women into the workforce then more women can be taxed more people can be taxed um however there's this idea that has been uh being pushed in the community uh especially the black community that you know you can you can do it all by yourself right and nobody is we're not supposed to do anything by ourselves you know men should not be doing anything by himself and women should not be doing anything by herself but we have this idea that we're supposed to be independent of each other instead of being codependent on each other so this independent ideology is an ideology that was brought up to condition us to make us feel that we don't need each other more specifically to make women feel that they don't need men where women start making money where now she's making the money so what is the use of a man right so now it's it's, it's providing this perspective that that the purpose of a man is to just 
pay her bills when that when a man's purpose is far far much greater than just providing and just paying her bills because a man have pretty much uh, 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 instincts of their environment a man is more thinking about protection so when i'm out with my woman and and we're going someplace you know i'm not just out with her i'm i'm observing my environment with her she's just there with me to enjoy and have a great time but i have to make sure that what's happening within our environment that she is safe with me right that she's protected i have to look around and see you know because you know i've been in situations where you, you step aside for a second and then somebody is disrespectful to your to your woman right and and you know as a man you want to make sure that she's protected but when we can see that a woman don't have that protector then then it's easy for her to become you know uh to, to become a, a a victim to predators in society right but when people can see that this woman is protected then people are going to think twice about how they approach and deal with this woman so it is easy to target women uh, vulnerable women and vulnerable women are women who don't have a man around them to make sure that they're protected so you know my my perspective is really uh, uh understanding that you know we we have to cooperate we have to work together and yes some of the things that i say um some people will find it very offensive right but but then again you know when you look at the history of of all of our our great leaders right whether you're looking at bob marley martin luther king malcolm x and so many others right people were heavily offended by them when, like when when there was there was never a time in which right people was not offended by righteousness you know so even when you look at you know for you that are christian when you look at jesus there were many people that was offended by jesus there were many people that was offended by righteous teachings and that's because they were conditioned to a to to living a lifestyle that doesn't benefit them but it only benefits those that are in control and those that have power and those that are taxing the people so if you're offended by the truth then it's it just shows that okay well you're not fully aware of truth you're not fully aware of what is actually good for you because majority of your life you have been trained to think in a way that is not good for you and and that's pretty much why so I, you know it doesn't bother me that people may get offended by me because i'm not i understand where they're coming from i understand their conditioning as human beings we're very easy to manipulate it's not very hard all i have to do is if i know what you believe in then I can attach a, a, a particular uh, ideal to your belief. And the more that I, could, I, I uh, utilize this idea to your belief, then you will eventually start holding on to it and it will become a part of your life. So it's not easy to, I mean, it's not difficult to, uh, 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 to deceive people at all. And most people are being deceived. And that's just the reality of it. And when you tell them something that they need to hear, it's not going to feel good. You know, medicine doesn't always taste good or feel good. When you're training to work your body, it's hard at times. You're going to, you, you're going to stress your body out before your body starts benefiting from it. So things that are often good for us, it, it, it tends to be a struggle for us in the beginning. Wow, you are extremely passionate with this particular topic. Now, two things. The first thing is that I agree with everything that you say, except the part where you say that um, you feel like the majority of the women who um, are vulnerable are women who are not protected by their men. Now, perhaps you say made by their men because, you know, in our Haitian society, having a brother is also having a protector. Having your father is also, you know, um, having a protector. But I've been single for a very, very long time. And I wouldn't necessarily place myself in the category of a very vulnerable woman where any man can just walk up to me and want to attack me. But I attribute it to my spirituality. 
I find that if an individual, whether a man or a woman, is able to definitely strengthen that spirituality, you're not necessarily vulnerable to when uh, other people wanting to attack you, even if you're walking alone, if you are by yourself. I feel like your aura can also place, you know, a, a pretty strong protector around you. But after that, I definitely agree with everything that you say. And I want to know that you have those strong, independent thoughts because of your family structure, because of your parents. Okay, so you said something very important, right? So the aura in which how you carry yourself, right? Um, it, it can affect how people deal with you. Now, if you're a single woman and the way in which you carry yourself where your body is overly exposed majority of the time, where, where the first thing that somebody sees is not your mind, but is your body, then yes, you're making yourself vulnerable for, for, you know, for any man to come and, and do whatever to you. So how you carry yourself as a woman is extremely important, you know? So, so of course, th this is very anecdotal because you're speaking of yourself and how you carry yourself, right? So there are anomalies out there. However, when you look in terms of society as a whole, how, how majority of women are carrying themselves, how they are dressing, how, you know, uh, showing their body parts is normal. And if, and if women are carrying that particular behavior without, the, without having a man, and most men would not want their woman to carry that type of behavior, right? So yes, uh, in, in a sense, you know, it's not, uh, um, you know, because you're single, you don't have a man, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're prone to attack, right? So this is, this is not an absolute that I'm making here. However, right, the, the chances are greater because there is no male protection. Now, you know, having fathers, having brothers, which is a great thing because they can, they can be there for you, but they're not always there for you. They're not always going to be there, you know. So who's always going to be there and who should always be there for you? Your man, your husband, right? So, so when you have a husband, and, and he's a, a, a good husband, a strong man, based on what you choose. Because you, like, we choose each other, right? Um, so at the end of the day, like, you know, as men, we have to be careful with what type of women that we choose. And as women, you have to be careful with what type of man that you choose as well. So when you have that, he becomes an added protection to your life. He becomes a provider for your life. He becomes somebody to, to help you to feel safe and secure because you want to live your life and you want to live your best life, you know? And his duty is to make sure that you can do that, that you are free to express yourself and live your best life because you have that safety, you have that protection. You know you can hold him and you know that he can hold you. You know you know when you're vulnerable, you have a, a, a strength right next to you that can be there for you to support you in the ways that you need. You know, so I, I completely agree and understand where you're coming from, but it doesn't necessarily negate what I'm saying as well. Yeah. Now, do you have strong? Go ahead. Yeah, do you have strong opinions because of your upbringing? Well, I was brought up, you know, under a Christian household, right? My dad was a, a, a minister, and um, and I've had the pleasure of of seeing how other many other ministers operate and majority of them I would disagree in terms of how they conduct themselves as supposedly men of God right when a lot of them that's their title but that's not who they are truth, truthfully and I was blessed to say that my dad was you know one of those that I can say somebody that really did his best to be a servant you know to serve the people to serve humanity to serve to do the right thing so um, my upbringing, you know, in, in ways in which my dad has raised me, he's raised me to be a seeker of truth, to be a seeker of knowledge. Never get comfortable thinking that you understand and you know it all because there is always more to learn. There is always more to gain, you know, from society, you know, and I've witnessed my dad, you know, coming from Haiti, having a particular train of thought. And then the more he lived in America, his train of thought evolved you know, um, where he had a perspective of African-Americans and 
even with that perspective of African Americans, which you understand, most Haitians, you know, especially coming in the eighties, you see African Americans, you think, oh, they're no good. They're no good. They're bad, you know. But my dad put me and my brothers into an, an African American church. My dad, even though he had those thoughts, he uh, placed himself within that community that he thought was no good because he wanted to see for himself right so he did not want to have to have his uh perspective which was misconstrued by society because of course you know um back in the 80s right african americans were told one thing about haitians and haitians was, were told one thing about african americans which was pretty much keeping us divided right and and i've witnessed my dad you know uh go beyond these divisive thoughts to sort of like uh embrace the african-american community and to really see for himself you know the type of people within that community and i was brought up in an african-american church i sang in a in the uh, african-american choir you know i i was a, a usher in the african-american church so I, you know i was raised within that community and then at home and then around around my friends you know i hang around a whole bunch of haitian friends so you know i was able to sort of like embrace not only my own culture but african-american culture so african-american culture became a part of who i am um you know that they were my friends They're, they are my friends you know and i've and i've been able to learn the history of america of of black americans and and witness and see what they have gone through and and also be subjected to many of the of the um racism and prejudice that they have gone through i've witnessed it and experienced it myself as a black man in america so i understand their plight but also i have a haitian background i i, I understand uh, and know what what black power truly means when you know in haiti all of your leaders are black all of your leaders look like you the people that are in power looks like you so you know you, you come here in america you see a whole bunch of haitians that comes here we we definitely look at america as a land of opportunity and and we take that opportunity to improve our lives where here in america you have plenty haitian politicians haitian businessmen and business women that are successful that are doing great things in america and taking advantage of the opportunities that are there and not making excuses for anything because that's what we were raised within our haitian background and heritage so that's pretty much you know who i am and why i am this way because of my mom and my dad my mom she was a hustler okay my, my mama opened up the uh, haitian restaurant you know she worked in other restaurants and for for a long time you know she was cooking meals and and she had her own food truck before the food truck was a thing it was a van but she had a, you know she was doing that and and making her money you know uh she bought a home and she was able to really progress in life because she was a hustler and me my uh my brothers like we've learned from what our what our mom did because we seen her as a hard worker you know so my perspective like to me like you know uh women work from my perspective my mom worked so so like you know my mom handled her business so when i look at women you know well a man have to do this have to do that have to do this have to do that for me i'm like um um you're not a white woman in america you're a black woman your mama your grandmother your great grandma they all have worked so we're buying into ideas that is not even our own right so like you know so this feminist movement is really about taxing women is is really destroying the minds of women in the minds of our community and i remember you know where uh welfare you cannot have a man in the house in order to get that welfare check so if you want if women wanted that welfare money a man cannot be in the house this is a government system that was making sure that there's no man in the house in order for you to get that welfare check so of course of course this this was mainly about separating families so and i've seen my, my mom and my dad they didn't always quite get along you know my mom she was 
was an independent woman. I'm not going to front. She was. She was She was a worker, you know, a hard worker. My dad, you know, he was a preacher. He was a man of, of the cloth. And, and, you know, he was very strict. Um, but, you know, he, he stand on his integrity. But even though they had their differences, you know, they loved each other. They respected one another. And they never stopped each other from being a parent. My dad never got in my mom's way from being a mother. And my mom never got in my dad's way from being a father. So, and I was able to learn from the two of them. And I was able to, to really grasp something great from the both of them. And, you know, and I, and I miss them dearly. You know, both of my parents are not here right now. But they, they were a major influence in who I am today. Wow, you are very, very passionate. You're giving me a, such different energy today. I don't know what's going on. You're giving me like some, oh, some powerful, some strong energy. And I love that. I really feel like people who are going to tune in and who are going to like listen to you after, they're definitely going to um, take in everything that you say. And I love that. Now, Joe, um, how, do you, how do you see the heavy immigration that is going on from Haiti into the United States. Are you seeing um, an impact? Have you noticed an impact? Are you seeing a difference into maybe the cultural um, situation? For example, those of us who are here in Haiti, we are um, noticing that little, little Haiti is having a surge of cultural activities because there are so many you know, Haitians that are not only over there, but also because of the situation in Haiti. And there's different type of opinions with those of us who are here in Haiti who are feeling like um, people that are living abroad, Haitian Americans or Haitian who have immigrated should take a stance into what Haiti is currently facing politically. And we're feeling like all or most of cultural events should stop. Whereas, you know, you do have another factor of people saying that, well, no, there is still, a, you know, a certain level of celebration that as a Haitian community, we have to continue um, to take, you know, put ourselves together and do. So I want to hear your perspective in terms of like, Maybe what you have observed with the change with the African immigrants. Just the other day, I was watching some type of Republican Congress thing that they were having, and they, they felt very, I, I do believe that it was from your either mayor or, you know, some big head over in Florida, and they were feeling very alarmed, saying that, you know, they are feeling like too many Haitians are coming in here. So do how do you see that um, that shift happening? How do you see or have you noticed um, a difference in, in the migration of Haitians over there? Well, I, okay, I'll say that, um, Amer if, if Haitians want to come to America, they should just let them come. Because America's greatness has a lot to do with Haitians, period. Uh, Haitians fought in the, uh, the Re uh, American Revolutionary War. You know, you had Tuskegee Airmen, which were Haitians, all right? The, the Louisiana Purchase was made because of Haitians. So America's greatness is, is really due to, many, to Haitians, right? Chicago was founded by a Haitian, all right? So people don't understand, and they don't understand the history of Haiti and what Haiti have done to the contribution of America. And if they refusing Haitians to come in, they just plain ignorant to that history. Plain and simple, right? You know, I've I've come across African Americans who say I should not speak on African American stuff. I don't care. I don't listen to them because I understand that there's a level of ignorance. They don't know any better. And I can't be mad at somebody who don't know any better. So, you know, I, I just hope that they would do more research and see that a lot of the greatness that they have is because of Haiti. Right, Haiti, the, the, many of the issues that Haiti is facing today is because of 1804. It's because Haiti was the first black independent nation to gain their independence. It was never given to, to Haiti. And everybody else, their independence was given to them. Haitians took theirs. And as Haitian people, we understand that. We have a pride about that. We understand that, no, I'm not asking you to give me a damn thing. I'm going to take what actually belongs to me. And, and if Haitians want to migrate here to the United States, open up the borders for Haiti because they have done a lot for America, plain and simple. What?
Après discussion, ça. You know, they can fine. They can get stabbed about it, but it's the truth. You don't have to like the truth, but the truth is the truth. Okay? So, um, and you have some Haitians who don't even understand this history as well. You know, who who, who want foreigners to to continue to occupy Haiti, right? Country. Haiti should be able to govern themselves in the way in which they feel that is best for themselves. And right now, the problem with Haiti is that there's too much foreign intervention in Haiti, occupying Haiti and, and stripping Haiti of its resources, stripping of Haiti of all of these minerals and precious resources to in order to put wealth into their pockets. And, you know, Haiti is pretty much the Congo of the Caribbean. And many folks don't don't even realize that right like you look at the congo in africa extremely wealthy but the people are extremely poor how is that how is your the land in which you reside in is extremely wealthy but you yourself are poor and everybody else that comes into that land is getting wealthy from it and that's what that's what is happening in haiti and and some and some people are aware of that history and are aware of of who they are and where they came from so I understand, you know, where I came from. I understand, you know, the 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 uh, the Dessalines, you know, and what he meant to the Haitian people and that type of spirit and that type of energy to be able to fight for what is yours because you have to take it. Nobody's going to give it to you, you know. So, I mean, it is what it is. And, and some people, a lot of people are starting to wake up because I remember when, you know, when I came to America in the 80s, Haitians weren't accepted. Haitians were made fun of, you know. Um, and over time, you know, over time, when they start seeing these same Haitians are making more money, are opening up businesses, you know, once upon a time, there were six banks, six Black-owned banks run and owned by Haitians, you know, in South Florida, right? People don't know that, right? There are a lot of uh, business owners that are Haitian and and people start seeing that wow these Haitians are getting money because in America the only thing that people respect is money they don't respect you unless you have money and that's that's a, 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 a the mentality that needs to change that needs to switch you know and and but Haitians has been getting it because we understand we, we are very very prideful people we're not here to beg for anything you know, we're here to to work our butts off because that's how we were raised. We were raised to work. We were raised to go out there and get it and don't make any excuses. Many of like many Haitians weren't capable of voting. So how were they able to to obtain a lot of the, the you know, the, the, uh, the respect, a lot of the income, you know, the businesses? Because they went out and get it. They understand that. Look, this is about e economics and, you know, like in America, you know, a lot of us just focus on voting. You know, I'm getting into a little politics, which I don't really do much. We just focus on voting and then we just leave it alone. And we just think that that's all we have to do. Go to a ballot and we leave this person in charge. But yet we don't understand. We don't understand the many corporations that are funding them. You know, we don't understand the backdoor deals that are happening with them, you know, and we're not checking them. We're not going into our town halls to have these meetings to see what is happening in our own communities, right? You look at Haiti and you see that Haiti is always, the people are always there. Hey, what's happening with our government? What's going on with our government? What's going on with our people, you know? So right now you have this, this, this. Uh, uh, they call him a, 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 a gang leader. That's code word for, you know, and they, they don't want to call this man a, a Haitian revolutionary, which pretty much what he is in, in this time where, uh, all, all he's trying to do is help liberate the people and allow Haiti to govern themselves, where the president was assassinated and then we had an interim president and Haiti was not even allowed to even elect their own president so they can be governed by somebody that they want, you know. So, of course, there's going to be issues, you know, and, you know, we can go back from the, the, from the, uh, the uh, Papa Doc, Baby Doc, Duvalier, how these folks was pretty much working for foreign interests and the Haitian people, they noticed that. And which is why every single one of them had to escape Haiti because the Haitian people 
was not going to allow this person that's supposed to represent us but are not representing us they're representing foreigners they're representing foreign corporations and foreign businesses you know which doesn't serve the haitian people so you know haiti knows their history they know look we gain our independence and we fought for it and they're not willing to back down and they will continue to fight you know like you know that's what it was about <laughs> you know let's take this cow with you and let's burn you know that's like you know haitians can be some very severe tough you know hardcore people with with some integrity behind it wow i'm loving this conversation a lot of passion yes now the internet is buzzed out i try to stay away from it when i'm not working because i can see and it, it's it's so um i saw it coming a mile away which probably those who are in power are having a lot of difficulties um to do the things that they used to do um in the past because you definitely have a generation that has already empowered themselves you have a youth um people that are because you already have if you're thinking about even my generation mm -hmm. you have people who, who already have teenagers who are already immigrants so their perspective and their views on international politics on what's going on in haiti is very strong because they're meeting those american politician heads on and i love to see it because the other day they had a meeting supposedly a meeting at the caricom and there were no haitian representative it was canada it was the united states it was jamaica it was guyana i believe but there was not one representative from haiti and the internet went crazy about that about saying that why are we having discussion about haiti but there are no haitian representative for Haiti. So I'm guessing that they are having some issues. They've been providing the entire country because I can hear helicopter and everything since this early morning. However, it's great to be online. It's great to have a voice, but I want to know from um, your perspective, are people organizing themselves in the United States or in your state and are really voicing out their opinion? Because it's two different things to have, you know, many people have opinions and thoughts online, but it's another thing because you have, this is why I try to empower people and I, I let them know that, but you also have to meet these people where they act because they are, at the end of the day, they are the one who are signing the dots. They are the one who are still continuously you know, being able to take on those decision makings that are affecting us. So are you seeing in your state that people are actually organizing themselves, going back to what I'm saying to you, where, you know, you have people who are in Haiti who are feeling like, um, okay, we're not seeing really the support from the international community, the Haitian diaspora, because you guys are going along and continuing your lives where we are literally, I mean, it's hell for us here in Haiti. So there needs to be some type of like um, strength, sometimes of like, come take a disac, who on bras, on bras, on bras, on take you come see the Haitians that are over there, you guys are really putting in the works. Are you seeing it? Um, you know, in America, we're like a whole bunch of dogs that can only bark, but has no bite. And what I mean by that is we talk, but the most we'll probably do, we'll probably march. And that's it because um, we've been conditioned to have a, I need a savior mentality. So, you know, we'll pray to Jesus and hope he handles it. We'll pray to God and hope that he handles it, right? We're, we, we're, we're a voter politician in and hope that that politician handles it. But we're not willing to do anything. That is the mentality of Americans. And for many of us that are growing up and buying into the, the, the system of America, that's how we have been conditioned to think, you know? So nobody is actually getting active, right? Nobody is, is trying to get active because we see the atrocities of things that are happening. And the most we'll do is, you know, petition your politicians, right? That's it. That That's the most that we're, we would do, right? Because that's the American mindset. It's not just a Haitian thing, it's America as a whole, right? We see what was happening in Israel and Palestine and whatnot. And many of us just, you know, 
we put a post on Instagram and we felt like, yeah, I did something. I posted on Instagram. Yeah, I did something. I viewed my, I, I, I shared what I thought on Facebook, right? But none of us is saying, you know what? I'm not going to your store. I'm not buying your product. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to boycott these companies, these corporations that are funding the atrocities that are happening. None of us are doing any of that. We understand that everything is capitalism, but we are not taking a capitalistic approach and stopping those from uh, that are actually contributing to the things that we don't want. So we are we just talk. That's it. We talk. A lot of Haitians here. That's all we do is talk. You know, we're not willing to to do the work. We're not willing to actually support one another. We're not willing to even put to even support those businesses that are helping our people. You know, in fact, you know, when it comes to those businesses, we, we often speak very negative of ourselves. We often speak very negative of our own people. You know, that's that's the mentality. Right. So when you turn on the television all, all the time and, and what do they show us that is black? Mostly entertainers, mostly singers, rappers, uh, 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 athletes. That's what they show us. You know, they will come to Little Wayne and ask him what he thinks about politics. They will go to Cardi B and ask her what she thinks about politics. You know, they're not asking, you know, the the general uh, black folks, because when they do, when, when black people take a very conservative approach about what is the right thing to do, that particular approach is shunned. That particular approach is condemned. So we're not allowed to even be conservative. We're not even allowed to even chastise our own people who are taking an approach of, of, of being very compliant to, to a, a, a system that doesn't even help them. So most of us are pretty much just actively, uh, are actively operating uh, 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 within the system to really not really serve ourselves. We're not serving ourselves and we don't even realize it. We don't care. We don't have time for that. We still got to pay our bills. Kids still has to get fed. You know, it's like, yeah, I hear you, but I got problems here too. Okay. But then our government would take money instead of, instead of uh, funding us and helping us with our problem here. No, they're going to spend that money over there. Right. And not help us. And then the most that we said we need to do is uh, just go vote. None of us is challenging all of these corporations we we still you know like we hear we see what's happening in the congo right but most of us still are buying our iphones our ipads all of these products that that young black uh, kids are dying for in these mines and we still buying the products that that you know they're dying of so we're a bunch of talkers here like we're a bunch of cowards really to be honest americans are a bunch of cowards America, uh, Americans don't really have a real backbone. We'll say America is the best, but, but that's all we'll say. Would we actually get up and do anything? We'll probably go ahead and protest in March. But as soon as we're done with that protest in March, we'll go back into these stores. We'll go back and, you know, we'll go online and shop and buy and spend money with all of these companies who are involved in all of the problems that we are complaining about. So, so we're, we're part of the problem and don't even realize it. And that only speaks to our own ignorance as a people. We don't know any better. And because we don't know any better, we can't do better. Although we feel like this is not right. But then we don't have any leaders that is telling us, well, if you want to fix this, then stop supporting this company. Stop supporting this corporation. Stop putting your stock money into this particular business. But no one talks to us like that. We don't look at it from a capitalistic perspective. We don't. We only see democracy without capitalism. That's that's where, where it's at. So I don't think I don't think much is going to be said or done. You know, we're we're conditioned. Yeah, I really agree with you, um, and I do agree. And I'm really happy that at the end you said what you said because. Um, I mean, when even when I think about, you know, the people who um, follow me and everything that I have to say, you know, they are too conditioned. Even if they could see, they probably don't know the how to to start 
and say that okay i'm going to take a a, a stance on that and you know what i'm gonna go even further down and tell you that you know you just mentioned and i agree that there are so many Haitian people that are now in position in, in politics. But what are they doing? Don't you have, um, you guys have like this Port Powell, her name is Jean-Pierre something. She's from Haiti, she's of Haitian descent. She works with the Biden administration. But what are their stance toward Haiti? Those are the same people that are funding the chaos that are happening here in Haiti. So in my opinion going from also when someone questions and say well why are you in Haiti you could be doing this work elsewhere because it's such a different realities there is no I mean I don't think that anyone would understand the livelihood of Haiti even the own Haitian people I do not believe that they really fully understand the depth of what they have been going through since prior to the assassination of the president, but with this assassination of the president, it has been complete hell. And I watched the president of Haiti be assassinated and people go about their day as if nothing happened. Whether here in Haiti, whether in other Caribbean countries, whether the Haitian international, the, com the international community, and that says a lot about not only Haiti being alienated, but also about Haitian people, like how are we living as a society, about us being from Haiti, you know, those of you who are in the diaspora, right, in the U.S., whether in Canada, there was not any heavy protest from the international community about the assassination of the president of Haiti, and then you have all these mess going on here in Haiti. You know, I mean, Joe, we could go on and on, but I have to go back to photography um, because, I mean, we could be here forever if we had to um, talk politics, you know, talk um, what's going on here and everything that's going on. But I, you, you, you are multifaceted. I'm so happy that I'm having those conversation with you because I could see that you are well aware of your country. You understand that you know this is a land that is rich. You understand the mineral resources, and I do see a lot of people posting a lot of um, TikTok about you know mineral resources that are happening here in Haiti. I cover it as well. I cover the United um, the United Nations Agenda 2030 and why they want such a force to come down to Haiti in order to be able to dictate, to continue to mine unlawfully, illegally, and to bring about the resources that they don't have. What people are not understanding are that countries such as um, the United States, countries such as France, they don't have those natural resources, you know? Having full type of electricity, they don't have those, those natural resources, but they are able to tax on countries in Africa, countries in Haiti, and continue to do their BS. But the world is waking up, and um, it's a fight. You know, I don't know if you are aware, over in Africa, you have, you know, the Niger, you have Burkina Faso, you have the Mali, who they've given their coup d'etat, and they are doing big things over there. Hopefully the youth, the, the African American, the Haitians that are over there are actually following what's going on in Africa, because that's really important, because those of us who are here, we understand that it's a fight, but it's very different for us. So um, I don't know where we are. They're literally trying to throw down our throat um, anything, I mean, you know, it's been hell for us. It continues to be hell. But, you know, we're here, we're praying, we are doing what we can, and we are watching the development. But also, you know, it's very important. It's not only to elect people who are going to serve you, but to actually give power to people who are going to be in the interest of your country. Because you have all these things that you have here, because you have people who are in leadership positions but they are serving not even their own interests. They are serving foreign interests, as you said. So I'm so happy to hear that you are very well aware of um, the issues of your country and the why behind all of those things. Now, you mentioned that now you are working with organization, and I could see that it's kind of like, I don't want to say an elevation, but of course, you know, there's always going to be a difference when you start to work and you're kind of like, how do they say it? It's not necessarily pro bono, but you know how you do things for free just to build on your portfolio. You just want to build on to now becoming a full businessman. And I want to hear from you, how do you get a seat at those tables? How do you get those contracts? 
How do you get to work with Argonine? How, how do you get noticed in your field? Um, well, you know what? Um, the best form of, of advertisement is word of mouth. So, um, and, and really, you ha always have to be careful how you entertain strangers, right? So w w if you're there to work, you know, you want, you want to give your best. You want to uh, represent yourself well, and you want to respect those that you're working with and working for, you know. So, um, and a lot of it has to also do with, you know, it, it matters who you know, right? So, um, you know, for me, I've been fortunate to work with some people who are already heavily connected, and through their connections, you know, um, I've been a, I've been blessed to sort of like gain access to their connections and mainly because of you know being respectful within myself and also being respectful of them and and seeking to to uh to not to please but to to go above and beyond uh their needs to make sure that that they are happy with your service so as a businessman you know in owning my own business it's important for me to make sure that everyone that i work with are is happy with uh the work that i provide for them you know um and there are moments where yeah i, I did i did work for, for for nothing you know um because if like for the most part if i if i see that you're doing something and i believe in what you're doing if i believe in what you're doing you may not have the funds you know but but i i and if i can contribute to what you're doing then i will contribute in whichever way that i can because i believe in, in you so and and which means you know i i may i'm i may provide my services without expecting anything in return you know because I, since i believe in you i want to see you succeed you know so your success is also my success right so i understand that you know nobody uh, uh nobody makes it by themselves right we all we need each other so so who i am as a, as a human being i need the cooperation of others which means i must also cooperate with others which means um what i want from others i must be able to provide that as well right so i if i want respect from others then i must give respect right i must not look down upon others i must look at others as you know as just another human being you know who is also capable of greatness but also capable of you know being shady as well you know so you know we we have to depend on one another but also understand that we need one another and we have to cultivate one another so your growth will help my growth right so if you're successful in what you're doing and i'm here on this platform with you then your success will only help to elevate me right so I I have to be respectful with who you are and what you're doing and be very appreciative of that because you're bringing value to me and I as well bring value to you. So we have to look at things in that perspective that we bring value to one, one another, right? Nobody makes it by themselves in this world. There is no self-made at all. And that's a term that we hear a lot. I'm self-made this. Nobody is self-made everybody needed the aid and the help of somebody else and for those who think that they are self-made then they're, they're pretty much blinded to the reality of how the universe functions because the universe is cooperate with one another right we need the moon as well as we need the sun as well as we need the air the ocean and all of the animals within and each other because who am i without your presence who am I without the presence of other people, you know, that's in my life? Because I'm only able to be who I am and excel and whatever I excel because of the impact that I make on other people. So I have to respect other people. I may not, I may not, we may have differences. However, even with differences, I have to respect you as an individual because there's a lot in which I can learn from you, even if I disagree with you. There's a lot in which I can gain from you, even if I disagree with you. So we always uh, uh, impact one another. And there is always something that we can learn from each other and, and especially learn from ourselves. Because how you deal with me and how you treat me is a reflection of how I deal and treat you, right? So 
I don't, I, I don't have any issues with people. You know, I've had the same phone number for what since 1998. I've never changed it. I don't have people that is that is, you know, using my phone to try to plot against me or what. I don't, I don't have any of that issue, right? So, of course, not everybody will fit in my circle because of how I carry myself. If you're somebody who is uh, who uh, is disrespectful of yourself and your, I'm not going. There's no reason for us to be hanging around because since I have respect for me, and I see how you handle yourself over there, I'm gonna stay away from you. And if you so happen to come into my presence and I have to deal with you, then you're going to learn immediately that you cannot deal in my space. I might be a little bit too blunt for you. I might be a little bit too honest for you, and you might be offended by my bluntness and by my honesty, not because I hate you or I have anything against you. No, because I love you and I want you to be better. And I don't love you because I love you. I love you because I love myself at the end of the day. I love you and I care for you because I love and care for myself. Because I, I am not myself alone. I am who I am with you included. That's how I see life. Man, I don't know if you heard this, but I will say that you have grown a lot because I interviewed you two years ago, but tonight, if today, I you're giving me like <laughs> out of depth. It's just like it's a different level. It's it's but I love it. I love it. It's like I feel like you have so much to say. Like one question is that there's not a definite answer. But what I also do notice is that you you bring it to um, a people person, people relationships. And I really want people to understand that because, you know, you don't do anything in this life without having built, you know, your people skills, your relationship. A lot of people are always thinking that it's about the money, but it's not always necessarily about the money. It's about the respect. It's about your integrity. Mm -hmm. It's about the way that you treat people. It's about building those relationships that are also building your catalog. It's probably why you get into some doors and maybe someone who is a little bit more permanent than you maybe someone who has a lot more following a lot more visibility than you is not necessarily able to get into that particular door because you do have people skills because you are a man of value because you are a man of your word and i'm saying so because i've worked with you two years ago and i've dealt with you know here and now and it's always been a steady it's never been a bad vibe it's always been yes i can do so this is how I can do it. This is how I can't do it. And it's always been very, very steady. So of course, if there's a new project coming in, who am I going to call? I am always going to call you first before I call the next person because of that relationship. And I feel like people miss those things. They do a lot of un underhanded things and they're not understanding that, as you say, you know, the way that you treat people is a reflection of who you are. So I really love um, the way that you are you know, the direction and the way that you are answering those questions because it shows a lot of depth. And I also love the fact that you are able to work with youth and those creative endeavors because, you know, coming from Haiti and, you know, Haitian people are extremely talented and very entrepreneurial. And you do see a boom in the photography and the videography, you know, people in Haiti, even with everything that we're going through, this is why I try not to focus so much on the chaos, because I want to show people that even with everything that Haitian people are facing, you still have people who go out every day who are taking pictures. You still have people who go out every day and they're trying, they're like, you know, doing this content creator thing. They have their TikTok going on. But I really end those series that I bring in people who are shining without the spotlight, people who are being professional, what I want to teach them is that even when you are picking up your camera, even if you are picking up your phone and you're trying to do something, yes, your yes is supposed to be a definite yes. You're not supposed to back away from your words. You're not supposed to give people a mediocre word because the work level that you give to one client, as you say, is going to trickle down as a word of the mouth. It's not only the Instagram. It's not only the, you know, the TikTok, what people are seeing. It's what people are saying about you when you're not around. It's the way that people are going to talk about you, what they're going to say about you, that integrity, that level of professionalism 
that's what's also going to grow your clientele that's what's going to grow your portfolio and get you into those doors right absolutely so absolutely. now one thing that i really want to talk about is the quality of equipment I want to hear from your perspective when you are working, right? What do you feel adds um, more value into the work? Is it going to be the scenery? For example, um, it, you know, when you're looking at a project and someone calls you out and they're having a shootout, you know, do you look at the 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 scenery? Um, is it the equipment that you are going to bring into the project? What what elevates that project, in your opinion, as a videographer, as a photographer? So let's just say that they are picking you for a project and they are picking the next person for the same project. What would you say is going to elevate and differentiate your project from the next person? Well, you know, um, equipment matters, but at the same time, it does not matter right so no, nobody approach a painter an artist and say man uh what type of paintbrush you use what type of paint you use because that's an amazing painting right so i've had people that say oh my goodness yo your photography is dope what type of camera you use and and i find that like okay well it's not the camera because i've i've seen people who have some of the top-notch equipment and then i look at their work and it's it's trash it's not good you know, so having equipment or good quality equipment doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to use it, right? Just because you have hammers and nails don't necessarily mean that you can build a home, right? So having uh, the equipment, you have to understand it's only a tool, right? So you are not as good as your equipment. You are as good as who as you are, right? So um, you could give me the least, you know, equipment and I'll make the best out of it. I can produce great work with the most unprofessional equipment because it's not the gear however yes there's the equipment does make a difference in terms of the quality and what it can produce right but when you're an art artist because if it's for me being a photographer being a videographer is it's not just somebody with a camera you're you're an artist and as a photographer right i i pretty much paint with light I'm utilizing lighting to tell my story. So I have to be able to understand what is it that I'm creating here, how I am uh, how I am lighting this subject or the composition, right? What's in my frame? What is just happening in the background and also what is happening in the foreground? So I have to think about so many things, right? And how am I exposing it? How am I utilizing what this camera can do in order to create a great image? Right, um, I'm gonna show you right here. This is uh, uh, the camera that I started off with, okay? Old school camera, but I guarantee you, I'm gonna take some dope photos with this. So it's not the camera. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily make you a great photographer because you have a great equipment, you know? So um, I think it is important to really polish your skills, to really understand your craft, whatever that craft may be, get good at it. You know, if, if, if you have a cheap equipment, get great at your, the equipment that you have before you want to, to elevate. It's when, when, once you reach the limitations of that equipment, then you elevate. You know, if, 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 you, if you haven't reached the limitations of your equipment, there's no point in upgrading your gear as if that's gonna make you better. You know, so you, you, you have to be the artist that understand your art and what is it that you're creating so you can, you know, be good at it. You know, so I, I, I don't rely on equipment. You know, you have people that argue about gear. Oh, man, I'm use Sony. I'm use Canon. I'm use this. I'm use that. And to me, it's like, I don't care. <laughs> your, your gear don't mean a damn thing. What matters is you, the artist. Do you know what you're doing? You know, um, and that's what matters at the end of the day. You could give me any gear, any equipment. You know, if I understand how to utilize it, if I understand it's functioning, then I will create the best piece of art that I can create based on my understanding and my perspective of art. Wow. Thank you so much. You really reassured me. And I love, love the answer because 
I too do YouTube and I do TikTok and I'm loving my TikTok, but I have been so, um, how, how can I say, like a little obsessed over buying like a lot of stuff, you know, um, looking at, um, you know, the way that people are coming on YouTube and all that they are having. And I am going to say that um, depending on the camera, you may have a greater quality. You yes. know, so I have been I have been a little stressed out over the fact that damn, you know, like I, I probably need to upgrade and I need to you know buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. But I always felt like also seeing people who work and you know every year, every two years, upgrading their their um either their device. But it's like, did you reach that full potential of the device that you had at hand? Do you know how it how it works? Do you know all the features that that camera has? You know, a lot of time people buy a lot of different equipment, and as you say, they don't even know the full detail of the equipment. But then, Joe, I feel like you are a true artist. This is the mindset. The, the mindset you have is, um, since I relate to it, I feel like this is a creative mindset, which goes like some people are just maybe a photographer, a videographer, but you know, I feel like for you, it's just, it's deeper than that. You're just a true artist. Like you are a true visual artist. You go beyond, you know, the equipment that you have at hand. Now, my, my question to you is, um, did you go to school for that person? I mean, you did say that you went to school and you pick up the camera, but did you perfection your art with um, practice? You know, did you perfection that art, that craft with practice? Well, like, like, anything you know school pretty much lays the foundation right it gives you the basic foundation of what you need to understand however um you know you you're you you master your craft in the real world real life experiences right so so for me um no i, I didn't perfect it while i was in school I, I like you know um i'm still learning you know i'm still growing i'm still learning new things new tricks i'm still learning from other filmmakers i'm still learning from other photographers Right. So I'm still like when I look at an image, um, I'm not just looking at the whole image. I'm looking at every detail of that image. I'm looking at the foreground, the background, the lighting, the different colors, the composition. I'm looking at so much. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, um, you know, uh, uh, what was the process? You know, uh, uh, what what type of, of you know, uh, of reflectors that was utilized? You know, what type of of uh you know how did this photographer light this subject you know um so there's a lot of things that i'm that i'm you know looking at so so for me you know like i i still have <laughs> i still have, have my photography book in which um you know i i learned a lot from so uh if if it's important for you right if you really want to know then study study uh, YouTube, you know, YouTube University, uh, pick up a book, um, read, um, you know, see what else you can learn, what else you can implement into your craft, you know, um, and don't ever think that, that you, that you know it all because, you know, like you look at some, I look at some new photographers and I'm just amazed by some of the things that they're doing that I never thought of. I'm like, wow. How come I didn't think about that, right? So, um, you know, because we're all different. We all we see the world from a different point of view, from a different perspective. So, you know, fully study your craft. You know, try to do your best at it. Try to improve. You know, you should not be what you were uh, a, a year ago. You should at least improve in some form or way or, or another. You know, if you haven't improved in your craft, improve in your people skills improving something right so there is so much to improving in yourself to actually elevate you as not just an artist but as a human being so always seek that elevation always seek that elevation mentally physically and spiritually so you can always uh become you know a, a much better version of yourself you know so for me that's that's what life is about it, it is about learning from my mistakes and learning from the mistakes of others but also learning from the progress of others and learning from my own progress you know always seeking to to gain more knowledge and information you know and and just just 
just learn to be better because you can always improve you know we're not perfect we're not made to be perfect we're made to constantly grow we're made to constantly evolve you know so you know i, I believe to to continue the evolution of self you know and no matter how we choose to elevate let's just continue that elevation awesome now joe we know that you are a very very busy man these days yes how can someone book you if do you, first do you have any availability do you have your calendar now what type of projects do you take on how can an individual who is interested in working with you how can they have access to you um they can always call me right they can always email me um but the best the, the best way to contact me is is through calling or texting um if they're reaching out through me to through social media it may take some time <laughs> because i like yeah, sometimes i'm way too busy but um when you know if if they have my phone number which you will find on my social media so if you go into my social media joe like especially instagram joe wesley you'll see my phone number you'll see my email you can go to my website and you can call me and when you call me um you know make that appointment and you know i'll i'll pretty much see where i, I can fit you into my calendar and once it's in my calendar then it's happening you know then and that's and that's what matters if it's not in my calendar then we didn't talk nothing happened like you know we we entertain a conversation but let's let's make it final let's finalize this and put it on the on the calendar or send me a calendar invite you know so i give my uh email to folks who wants you know uh like the people that i work with you know um especially the ones that i'm constantly working with they have my email joe b wesley one at gmail.com and <clears throat> if they if they want me to, to participate with something for them then just send me a calendar invite through that email and i will see it i'll either accept say maybe or denied <laughs> right so if i can't do it then it's denied right if i can do it then it's accept right but of course we would have a conversation about that about what is it that you need from me and then of course we'll talk about what is it going to cost you and whatnot you know and move forward from that okay and now going from that to wrap up because i know that you have to go i would love to keep you here for a lot longer yeah. but um how do you choose the project joe like do you choose for example how do you accept the project is it going to be the cost maybe if you're looking at it if it's a big client and they have something going on and you're looking at it like the money is going to be good do you look at that do you look at is it an interesting project and you feel like it's challenging but it's right in your lane is it um something that maybe touch a little bit more deeper than that how does someone like yourself you know choose on a project and also i want to talk about costs you know i want to talk about fees how does a photography a photographer a videographer a cinema cinematographer how do you you know how how are those fees you know how do you build a client well okay so first and foremost if i don't believe in it then i'm not accepting it regardless of the cost right if i don't believe in what you're doing right if if let's say you you, you need a videographer and you need me to do video or take photography of something that i find degrading something that i don't believe in i'm not taking it no matter the cost right so um you know my integrity comes first um you know so i don't want to just accept anything um and uh secondly um if you know you you need me for a particular service you know i i would tell you directly okay this is what my my rate is going to be um and when do you want to do this okay great send me your email your contact info and i'll create an invoice for you and send that to you and um you can pay through the invoice right um and we go from there uh so you know uh depending on what i'm doing i have rates for different stuff you know whether it's headshots i have rates for headshots rates for uh portrait photography rates for videography service whether it's a full day like i have a day's rate or half a day rate um depending on on what is it that you're you're seeking of me then i will tell you exactly what that cost and um when i need my payment um but if you somebody and you have something and you say look i don't have much money um 
I may say, okay, you know what? I, <clears throat> go to this person um, <clears throat> because, you know, if it's, if, if like, for instance, I once uh, worked on a project for a young gentleman. He was about 18, 19 years old. He didn't have any money, but he was, he created a, a clothes line, you know, and um, he was just starting off and he didn't have any money for it. Um, and you know, he was genuine. He was real. He told me, look, I don't have any funding, but I would, I would love, and I worked with him, you know, Th that doesn't mean I would work with everyone. Right. Um, so if somebody come to me with a genuine idea and they may not have the funds for it. If I actually believe in what they're doing, yes, I may work with them. If I don't believe in what they're doing, but yet if I, if, if it doesn't necessarily violate my personal integrity, then I'm gonna have my cost. If you're not willing to pay my cost, then we can move. We can move on. You know, we don't have to. We don't have to do it. So, I don't accept every project um, that is thrown at me. Um, however, you know, I, I I do decide whether I will take it on or not, depending on what it is. You know, so most people, for the most part, um, they see the work that I do and they come to me specifically for the type of work that I do. So I'm rarely ever denying anything. Um, unless I can't do it on that day, unless I have something else that is happening, you know? So, you know, it all, it really depends, you know? Do you work internationally? Do you accept international work? I mean, yeah, if they're willing to pay for my travel costs and food and pay for my services, of course, you know, just make sure I'm able to get there and leave safely and, <laughs> and eat and we're good to go. So of course, yeah. Great. Now, Joe, um, where can someone look at your portfolio? I mean, is it Instagram? Is it um, because you just described different type of service? So do you, but I usually felt like you do big, 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 like, you know, type of work because I see you. I don't know if it's because of the way that I've been following you. So I didn't think that you did headshots and, you know, I would say those simple services. But where can someone go and um, take a look at your work and see your portfolio, see what you got going on? Because you do a lot. Or did you want to describe a little bit for the public um, the type of um, services that you offer? Well, if you go to JoeWesleyPhotography.com, you will see everything. So it pretty much shows that I do events. I do uh, headshots. I do portraits. It even shows you uh, my videography work. Um, whether I'm shooting music videos, whether I'm shooting events, um, and all types of stuff. So I do have a video reel of the many different projects that I've done compiled into one reel. So you can see that as well. So um, my website pretty much gives you everything that I do. Um, so yeah, so that's definitely the best way to see everything. JoeWesleyPhotography.com Thank you so much. I really enjoyed having you here. I would love to keep you here forever, um, but I know you have to go. One last thing that I want to know is that I know that you came to Haiti before and you do have a vlog on your YouTube channel, a very, very old vlog, a family reunion vlog. And I want to know that if you feel that the um, political situation in Haiti is affecting your creativity perhaps and the and the fact that maybe, you know, Haiti is beautiful. It's, it's a very, very beautiful country. And do you feel like you, you, because of everything that is portraying that you would be reluctant to come and get some work done in Haiti? Or do you feel like, no, you know, in the future where when there is maybe a little bit more stability, you would always want to come back and, you know, get some work done here in Haiti. What's your thought on that? Um... You know, like, I don't have a problem going through Haiti no matter what time, no matter what is happening in Haiti, because most of what is normally happening in Haiti is in Port-au-Prince, you know. Um, so it doesn't represent all of Haiti. We're talking about a small portion of Haiti, um, you know. So when I go to Haiti, I'm going to uh, Petronville, Thomas, Antigua, Vungua, all of these different areas you know, where, where, you know, you won't see a lot of the, these issues, you know. Um, so Haiti is, is very beautiful, of course. Um, but living in the States, you know, we hear news about Haiti. It's always predominantly Port-au-Prince, but they don't say, oh, in Port-au-Prince, they say Haiti. So we just think the whole country is just in ruins, right? And, and a lot of people here don't really travel 
don't really get to explore the world and see what is what else is out there so people are are coming from a very 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 narrow perspective based on what the media has provided to them and of course the media is not going to tell you what you need to know right so which is why we're living in a time where there are so many independent media out there where you can see many different perspectives um which is pretty much highlighting most of what is actually happening in the world and opposed to what the, the main uh, fake news is providing. So all of the ma major news uh, media is providing a lot of fake news. It's, it's news that is predicated upon their sponsors, right? So they have to service their sponsors first. So when you, when you get a news that, that really affects sponsorship, you're not gonna get real news. You're only going to get a, a portion of the news that may represent some some aspect of truth and reality, but for the most part, you're not getting what you actually need to know and hear. So, so for me, yeah, you know, like uh, last I heard, the the, the uh, they shut down the airport. I don't know if that's still a thing or not, um, but if I can go to Haiti, because when I when I visited Haiti, I see all of these foreigners walking around in in Haiti like with no issues, no problems. I never hear them having any problems. You know, you, you see Europeans all the time in Haiti living their best life. You know, they don't have any problems, you know, but then we we in America being told that it's a shithole, but somebody else go and live in Haiti and it's paradise, right? So who else should we believe in, right? The the media who is only there to condition us to, to have a, a very uh, narrow perspective of Haiti or you know go see it for yourself and i've been blessed to see it for myself to experience haiti for myself to see that it's not what you're being told it is you know um you know i i, I would like to go back as soon as possible you know because haiti is it's pleasure for me it is fun it's good do your, brother, do your brothers um have the same views that of you course. have do they of course yes they they visited Haiti and it's been the same for them. It's 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 good vibes for them, you know. So when I when I've gone to Haiti, it was always good vibes. It was always good times. Um, so I I don't I don't remember experiencing Haiti and it was just bad times, right? I I don't remember having that, right? So it is what it is, you know, you can take that with a grain of salt if you like. However, you know, um, I think it's always best to see the world for yourself to see for yourself, you know, because I think your own eyes, you know, is, is better service to you than what somebody else is telling you. Um, you know, Matala, man, I would love, I'll say it in English, but in, I would love for you to say in Creole. Um, you know, I just, I just want, for example, a new um, demography moun ki ap gade channel moun e conversation ta mou gade mitele sur YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, kite yon, kite yon un message pou yon, pou nou mem ki an IT pou yon jen kap gade ou. Okay? You are a young man, you're doing your thing, you love your country, you are very opinionated about your country. So, um, you do have a, a public. So, Say in your language, do your own bagay kika um bio courage, kika um bio yonti espoir. Wow. That is the most difficult question you asked me of the day. You know that, right? <laughs> um continue vivo, continue to live your life. I, I how do you say it the best way that you can? <laughs> How do you say that? Yeah, don't call me at home at Zilly. Continue vivio parce que li important, um, li vraiment important pour jeune qui en Haïti ou pour un monde qui en Haïti ou pour yon gagne un sort de support avec yon monde tant qu'ou qui a fait bel travail qui pas vraiment en Haïti mais côté que ou capable de shed un force pour nous mêmes qui en Haïti pour capable de voyer li. Parce que là, on a tant de conversations. Ça me parle pour lui dire, oh, tu fais ça, you know, she, she, she got it all, you know, she's not here. Et pour la garder, oh, but c'est toujours même nous-mêmes. So I love to always make sure that they get reinforced too, you know. So go ahead, continue, continue to vivre, but dans quelle capacité? Um, 
fait tout ça au kebab pour vivre pour vivre view um yeah fait fait tout ça au kebab pour pour uh, uh, pour vivre yon bon la vie c'est pas celle pour vivre yon bon la vie pour être pas mais pour ta faire la vie en bon pour l'autre monde c'est ça me gagne pour <laughs> Great. Well, I don't know. <laughs> so, I can say that. I can say. I'm bien like Creole, but maybe you are nervous to talk Creole. I don't know, but I really feel like I didn't even know. Hi! Oh my God! How is he doing? Doing good. He decided to join me today, right now. Oh, that's so sweet. So, thank you so much, Joe. I appreciated this talk. I learned a lot more. I feel like we. I feel like the first conversation that we had, we we really stayed in that creativity, that professionalism. But you know, given the state of the world is so important. I mean, look at this world that we have in two years down the line. I feel like so much has changed, even here, even in Haiti. Um, believe it or not, I am completely raid in my neighborhood. We can't leave, you know, curfew at this and that. So it's it's definitely a, a changing world from um, two years ago. So I love the conversation. I love the that that you brought i love the way that you answered i follow your work and i am so proud of you i'm proud of the work that you are doing and like i said i cannot wait to work with you because you are an amazing photographer thank you so much for being here with me i don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to um say to the people um well you know there's only one thing i want to say and that is to you and that is thank you for having me thank you for allowing me this space to to share uh my story to be able to share with your audience who i am and 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 you know me so i i appreciate that so much um like i mentioned before you know uh we need one another um and you know i'm nothing without you so i appreciate that so much so thank you Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, the incredible, multi-talented, Haitian-American, Joe Wesley. Thank you so much for being here. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rest of the day. And people can follow you on Instagram. People can follow you on YouTube, your website. I mean, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. Have a good evening, Joe. You too. Bye. Peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our second guest, Mr. Joe Wesley. Today was um, amazing. I enjoyed having him. Joe has a lot of depth, you know, um, being from Haiti, both parents from Haiti. It was just important for me to listen to his conversation, for me to hear his opinion. Um, I wasn't expecting the conversation to go into that lane. But you know what? I usually love for the conversation to take on whichever route that is going to take on. Don't forget to follow him. Follow him on his YouTube page. Follow him on his Instagram. Definitely reach out if you are in need of an excellent photographer, an excellent videographer, and stay tuned for our upcoming and our next conversation series. I'm hoping that you guys are learning a lot from those individuals that are, I am bringing on to you. I told them learning. They are all creative, fun, um, just extremely professional, dedicated individuals that I just am always at all with their work. Thank you so much for being here with me. Um, don't forget to follow me as well on my social media page. I am here with you guys live on my Instagram. I am on YouTube over at um, Youth Agency International as well as Daisy Love 83, also DL Consulting Firm 83. You can also see me on TikTok, Miss Daisy Love 83 and DL Consulting Firm 83. I will see you soon. Have a beautiful afternoon.